To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon and download our app OneFin to start learning on the go. Hello, my dear friends. Shivateja is back again in front of you guys and this time to discuss our CA Inter RTP for November 2022 exam. Just few days back, our CA Institute has come up with RTP. As you guys know that RTP stands for Revision Test Paper. And at Indigo Learn, we have been taking consistent effort every time to ensure that your past exam papers, RTPs, MTPs, everything will discuss so that we will not miss out on any point. And at the same time, we are perfect with the concept and we'll also revise the concept. With that agenda, we have been discussing the paper every time with you guys. So for the same reason, Shivateja is back again in front of you guys to discuss our CA Inter RTP for November 2022 exam in relation to our indirect tax content. That is your paper four, for B part, where we'll discuss in detail what are the interesting questions which have come up in our RTP. And in fact, my dear friends, I was actually extremely happy and fascinated to see that there were some interesting questions which actually makes a lot of sense and they are very meaningful, which are there in this RTP of November 2022 and something which we have to spend time so as to get that good amount of clarity of thought on the kind of conceptual questions what they have covered in our RTP of November 2022. So without any delay, my dear friends, let's start the discussion and go through that. Come on. This is your RTP for CA Inter November 22 exam. And some interesting RTP because there are some good kind of question which are very sensible, which are very logical and which are very meaningful at the same time. Come on, my dear friends, let's see what are the questions which are there in our RTP of November 2022 exam. First, question number one, as we guys know very clearly that first question will always be a case study based MCQ where you'll find one interesting case study and based on that case study, you will find some wonderful questions in this. Let's see that. Delight Brothers, a partnership firm, is engaged in restaurant business. Fantastic. It is registered under the composition levy scheme under section 101 and 102 of CGST Act for the current financial year. Friends, I'm sure we know the concept that under section 101, we have got three categories of persons who are covered under a composition scheme. And the three categories of persons who are covered under a composition scheme are manufacturer, trader, restaurant, and catering service provider. And the rate of GST also, we know, my dear friends, that manufacturer rate is 0.5% plus 0.5% of total turnover. Trader rate is 0.5% plus 0.5% of taxable turnover. And finally, for restaurant and catering service provider, it is 2.5% plus 2.5% of total turnover. Now see, my dear friends, its turnover in the state for the month of April was 12 lakh rupees. And below they have given, it received new orders in the month of May to run a mess facility, that is a canteen facility, for supplying food at Vishwas Public School, a higher secondary school. Let me tell you, my dear friends, this particular service is exempt. And the reason for that is catering, including midday meals program to a preschool and education up to higher secondary school is exempt under GST. That is clearly given under one exemption list. But if it is given to Knowledge Institute of Technology and Engineering College, it will become taxable, my dear friends. Exemption is only up to preschool and education up to higher secondary school. Frontline hospital, these also become taxable. Exemption is only when it is given to an preschool and education up to higher secondary school. Rest all cases, it becomes taxable, my dear friends. Next line. It also provided catering services to Coral Limited Company for their annual general meeting. Obviously, this is also taxable. No second thought about it. Getting clarity, my dear friends. So whatever the service they have given to Core and Limited, that also becomes taxable, my dear friends. Now see, service was provided on 3rd of July. When is service provided? 3rd of July. But invoice was not issued by the firm to the company. In fact, we know the concept that whenever service is provided, invoice is required to be issued within 30 days from the date of completion of service. Now see, however, payment was received on 25th of July for which bank account was created on 28th July. And we say that the date of payment is 25th July because date when payment is entered in the books or a date when payment is created in the bank, whichever is earlier. And in this particular case, if you observe, invoice is not issued within time. Then turnover of restaurant business for the current financial year is 48 lakh. Very good. From the inception of next financial year, 
Delight Brothers will close down the restaurant business and will provide service of repairing of AC. Once you say repairing of AC, you cannot stay under section 101. The reason for that is very clearly that 101 composition scheme is only for three categories of persons manufacturer, trader, restaurant, and catering service provider. No other category of person can take composition scheme under section 101. But there is a possibility to take composition scheme under section 10 subsection 2A, provided aggregate turnover during preceding financial year does not exceed 50 lakh. In that case, it is possible. Now see. Direct Brothers undertakes intrastate transactions only. So based on information given above, choose the most appropriate answer for the equations. Compute tax level to delay brothers for the month of April. What is turnover for April, sir? Turnover for April is 12 lakh. On 12 lakh, they will pay tax at the rate of 2.5% and 2.5%. And obviously, it will be intrastate only. If it is intrastate, if it is intrastate outward, they cannot be under a composition scheme at all. So this will be 30,000 of CGST and 30,000 of SGST. So answer is option C, my dear friends, CGST and SGST of 30,000 each. Second, out of the new orders received by the firm in May, which of the following services are exempt from GST? Service provided to Vishwas Public School, already I told you that this is exempt, but this is taxable. Frontline hospital also is taxable. Exemption is only for Point A. Exemption is only for point A. So my answer becomes option C, only first one, because that is the only thing which is exempt. Third question. Time of supply of catering service provided to Coral Limited Company will apply general rule as per section 13.2. If invoice is issued within time, date of invoice, date of payment, whichever is earlier. If invoice is not issued within time, date of service, date of payment, whichever is earlier. So answer becomes 3rd July, 25th July, whichever is earlier. So answer becomes 3rd of July. That is option A, my dear friends. Clear? Next. Which of the following statement is most appropriate in respect of next to financial year for a delight brothers? They can continue to avail composition scheme under 10 1, 10 2. That's not possible. They are not eligible to avail composition at 10 10 True. They are not eligible to avail composition scheme at 10 10 2, but they can avail benefit under section 10 subsection 2 way. In fact, that is what is the most appropriate answer. Second point also is correct, but the third one is the most appropriate because 10 2 way can be taken by those category of persons who cannot take composition scheme under section 10 1. But 10 2 way says if aggregate turnover during preceding financial year does not exceed 50 lakh. Then current year you can pay tax at the rate of 3% plus 3%. Next. Rate of GST for service of repairing of AC. I just told you that it is 3% plus 3%, nothing but 6%. So answer is option C, my dear friends. State away concept. I hope this concept is clear for everybody. I hope we are getting clarity on this case study based MCQ. Very, very scoring, very, very meaningful, very, very sensible. No doubt about it. Next. Let's move forward to question number six, my dear friends. Nilkan Private Limited, a registered supplier of goods and services at Kolkata, has furnished following information for the month of February. What is that he's asking, by the way? They are telling rates of GST are 9%, 9%, 18%. 18%. Both inward, outward are excluded of taxes. All conditions necessary for availing ITs are fulfilled. Turnover of Nilkan was 2 and a half crore in business financial year. Very good. Compute minimum GST payable in cash for the month of February. That means we have to calculate output tax liability. We have to calculate input tax credit and find out what is the net tax payable. Intrastate supply of taxable goods, including 1 lakh received as advance in January, and the invoice for the entire value is issued in February. So this will become taxable in February only because I'm sure we guys know the concept very clearly that in case of goods, GST liability will not attract at the time of receipt of advance. GST liability will actually attract at the time when invoice is issued. And that to the concept clearly says the actual date of invoice or last date when invoice is ought to have been issued under section 31, whichever is earlier. So in this case, we will not pay GST when we got the advance, but we'll pay GST in February only. So that means on entire 4 lakh, we'll pay the GST at the rate of 9%. And 
Next. Purchase of goods from composition registered person in Kolkata. What happens, my dear friends? No input tax credits. Then, service provided by way of labor contract for repairing a single residential unit, otherwise than as a part of residential complex, it is intrastate transaction. Let me tell you, my dear friends, this is such a lovely question what they have framed where the conceptual clarity is very important. Let me tell you, service by way of pure labor contract, pure labor contract for pure labor contract for commission, installation, execution of original works that is exempt under GST, my dear friends. But here they are talking about repairs. So this will become taxable under GST. Exemption is only for commission installation of only original works. When we talk about repairing works, that will become taxable. Next. Membership of a club availed for employees working in a factory. No input tax credit. It is block credit under section 17 subsection 5. Credit is allowed only when it is a statutory obligation. And unless question says, we will not assume that it is a statutory obligation. Next. GTA services received from GTA, GST is payable at 12%. When it is 12%, no RCM, but ITC is allowed. Whatever input tax credit we have, that we can take it, my dear friends. Next. Interstate service provided by way of training in recreational activity relating to sports. This definitely will be taxable. Because exemption for training or coaching in recreation activity related to arts, culture, sports is exempt only when it is provided by a charitable institution. In this case, this is not a charitable institution. So this becomes taxable and we will charge GST at the rate of 18%. Next point you see. Interstate security service provided to ABC higher school, secondary school for their annual day function organized in FinTech's auditorium outside the school campus this point also will become taxable because security cleaning housekeeping surveys is exempt only when they are performed within the educational institution if they are performed outside the educational institution my dear friends let me tell you it will definitely become taxable so there is no question of exemption and this point becomes taxable next inputs to be received in four lots out of which second lot was received during the month what happens is no input tax credit because in case of goods received in lots or installment credit can be taken only upon receipt of last lot or installment in this case out of four lots only second lot has been received credit will claim only when the last lot is received and they're given the details of opening itc also correct my dear friends cgst sgst igst what is my opening input tax credit? 57,000 CGST, SGST is zero, and IGST is 50,000. What else I've got input tax credit? Composition dealer, no ITC, and membership of club, no ITC. RCM, I'll take input tax credit. It is interstate transaction, 2 lakh into 12%, which comes to 24,000. That definitely I take credits, no doubt about it. Twenty-four thousand. So my total input tax credit becomes fifty-seven thousand CGST. SGST is zero. IGST is seventy-four thousand. This becomes my input tax credit total. What is available, my dear friends? And if I have to calculate my output tax. CGST, SGST, IEGST. My output tax in the first transaction on 4 lakh 9%, 9%. So that is 36,000, 36,000. And on this 1 lakh 9%, 9%, which is 9,000, 9,000. Then uh, training and recreational activities, this 18%, this is also taxable. How much is that figure, my dear friends? 10,000. And this is also taxable 15,000. So total is 25,000 on 25,000, it is 18%, my dear friends. Come on, how much it works out to? 25,000 into 18%, 25,000 into 18%. That is working out to 4,500, my dear friends. 
So that is also my output tax. So finally, my total output tax, what I've got is 45,000, 45,000, 4,500. And already we have calculated our input tax credit, my dear friends. How much is my input tax credit I've got? We have seen what is our input tax credit, which is nothing but 57,000, 74,000. So first, we always know that before utilizing CGST, SGST credit, we have to utilize IGST credit, which is 74,000. So first I will use 4,500 towards IGST. Correct, my dear friends. Are we getting clarity? And I'll use 45,000 towards SGST first. The reason for that is IGST credit is first to be utilized towards IGST, then for CGST or SGST in any order, any manner. And the reason I'm using for SGST is only because I already have some CGST credit with me, but I don't have SGST credit. That is why I'm giving preference of using IGST credit towards SGST. There is a pure logical reason for that because CGST can't be used for SGST. SGST can't be used for CGST. Come on. 45,000 over, 4,500 over. So how much I have got actually? 74,000. Out of 74, out of 74,000, 45,000 is gone, 4,500 is gone. What is the balance figure, my dear friends? 24,500. That 24,500 I will use towards, what my dear friends? CGST, correct my dear friends? Then what else credit I have got? I have got a credit of CGST credit and tell me my dear friends, what is my CGST credit? We have just seen that. Come on, my dear friends, how much is my CGST credit? CGST credit is 57,000, but what I want is only 20,500. Net payable becomes nil, nil, nil. And the balance CGST credit is to be carried forward. You're getting my point, my dear friends. So what is the amount that is payable in cash is completely zero, my dear friends. The reason because we have effectively utilized whatever input tax credit we have got. So this is how you have to present in the exam very clearly because they asked what is the minimum amount payable in cash? Minimum amount payable in cash is zero. Clear everybody? Very, very interesting and wonderful question. And of course, very scoring also, guys. These kind of questions, you should not effort to miss out because they are very, very scoring. Next question. Rim Jim says a registered supplier receives 100 invoices for invert supply of goods and services involving GST of 10 lakh from various suppliers during the month of January 22. Out of 100 invoices, details of 80 invoices involving GST of 6 lakh have been furnished by supplier in their GSTR 1 filed before the due date and that will obviously come in GSTR 2B. Compute the ITC that can be claimed by Rimjim sales in GSTR 3B for the month of Jan 22 to be filed by 20th of February. Assuming that 10 lakhs is eligible. My answer will be even though 10 lakhs is eligible, my dear friends, the credit that I can claim is only 6 lakhs. Once upon a time, there was a concept called 5% variation is allowed. But now what we can claim credit is only 100% of credit that is reflecting in GSTR 2B. So whatever credit is reflecting in GSTR 2B, that much only we can claim credit. Ultimately, we can claim credit only when supplier has filed a statement of outward supply within the due date. And since that 20 suppliers have filed after the due date, we cannot claim input tax credit of that 4 lakhs. What credit we can claim is only 6 lakh rupees, 100% of credit that is reflecting in GSTR 2B. That much only we can claim it as input tax credit. Very, very interesting concept, my dear friends. Next. Question number 8. Examine whether the supplier of goods is liable to get registered in the following cases. Number one, Rudra Builders of Rohini, Delhi, wow, is exclusively engaged in intrastate supply of building bricks. Its turnover in the current financial is 23 lakhs. My answer will be yes, my dear friends, because generally, if it is Delhi, you are exclusively engaged in supply of goods, the limit is 40 lakh. 
But let me tell you, the 40 lakh limit will not apply for pan masala, tobacco and tobacco substitutes, ice cream and other edible ice, fly ash bricks or blocks, building bricks, bricks of fossil mills, earthen or roofing tiles. This is a case of building bricks. That is the reason why the limit of 40 lakh will not apply and the limit of 20 lakh will apply. And since it is more than 20 lakh, registration becomes mandatory. Second point. Hero of Himachal Pradesh is exclusively engaged in interested taxable supply of footwear. Wonderful. Its turnover in the current financial from Himachal Pradesh showroom is how much, my dear friend? 30 lakhs. Since it is Himachal Pradesh, we know that the six states are Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, Sikkim, Uttarakhand, Puducherry, Telangana. Only these six states are limited to 20 lakh for goods. For all other states, the limit is 40 lakh. But here it is only 32 lakhs. But the problem is, he has another showroom in Nagaland with turnover of 11 lakhs. That said, then registration becomes required. Why, my dear friends? Once you have got taxable supplies in special category state of Manipur, Mizoram, Nagaland, Tripura, then the limit for registration is not 40 lakh, 20 lakh. The limit for registration will become 10 lakhs. In other words, if a person has taxable supply in special category states of Manipur, Mizoram, Nagaland, Tripura, then registration is required if aggregate turnover exceeds 10 lakhs. And here he has to take registration in Nagaland also, Himachal Pradesh also. The reason for that because registration is to be taken state-wise under GST law, but not centralized. Next point. Question number nine. Fashion Queen Limited registered under GST, dealing in baby product, has aggregate turnover of 20 crores in the preceding financial year. The tax consultant of Fashion Queen advised it to issue e invoice mandatorily. Very good. However, Fashion Queen is of the view that since turnover is less than threshold limit for applicability of e invoicing, it is not required to issue e invoice. You are required to comment upon validity of advice given by tax consultant. Let me tell you, my dear friends, the advice given by tax consultant is absolutely valid. The reason for that is with effect from 1422, e-invoicing is made mandatory for all categories of business. If the aggregate turnover in any of the preceding financial year, starting from 1718, exceeds 20 crores. In this particular case, it is 40 crores. And since the aggregate turnover is more than 20 crores, e-invoicing becomes mandatory. And e invoicing is only for B2B supplies, but not for B2C supplies. Clear, my dear friends? Exactly. So that advice given by the tax consultant is absolutely valid. Very, very interesting point, my dear friends. Simple, but yet powerful concept. Second page. Ministry of Communication Information Technology, a government department registered under GST, has aggregate turnover of 52 crores in the preceding financial year. Wow. You are required to comment whether Ministry of Communication and Information Technology is required to issue e invoice in the current financial year. My dear friends, my answer would be no for this. Even though turnover is more than 20 crores, I have a logical reason why. The reason for that is that there are some categories of person who are exempted from the mandatory requirement of e invoicing. That is, SCZ unit insurance company or a banking company or a financial institution including NBFC, persons engaged in transportation of goods by road that is GTA, then supplier of passenger transportation service. Next point, person supplying service by way of exhibition of cinematograph film in multiplex screens and last one government department or local authority. In this particular case, this being a government department, what happens my dear friends? They are exempted from the requirement of what? E-invoicing. Such an interesting question, guys. And very scoring also if this kind of question comes in the exam. Finally, the last question, question number 10. We'll discuss that also. Other authentication is not required for persons who are already registered under GST. Examine the correctness of the statement. You are required to elaborate relevant legal provisions. Wow. My dear friends, let me tell you. As per section 25, subsection 6a, the concept of other authentication is required for both persons who are opting for new registration and also for the persons who have already taken registration under GST law. And in case of a proprietorship firm, proprietor should go for other authentication. Partnership firm, any partner should go for other authentication. 
for HUF, Karta should go for other authentication. For company, managing director or whole time director should go for author, should go for other authentication. And in fact, my dear friends, without without other authentication, they cannot make an application for refund. And moreover, they cannot make an application for a revocation of cancellation of registration. Those two they can't do if they do not have done other authentication. So without doing other authentication, they cannot do this activity, my dear friends. Getting clarity, everybody? Speak out. And moreover, interesting point, let me tell you, my dear friends, if any person, for example, is not assigned an Aadhaar number for some reason, whatever it is, then they told very clearly that if Aadhaar is not assigned, assigned, then you can please furnish documents such as Aadhaar enrollment slip. You would apply for Aadhaar, no? You will get that slip, right? Aadhaar enrollment slip. And, and along with that slip, please submit voter ID card or bank passport copy or passport copy or driving license. Something like you are submitting some identity proof along with your Aadhaar enrollment slip. And once, my dear friends, once Aadhaar number is allotted, the person must undergo Aadhaar authentication within a period of 30 days of allotment of Aadhaar number, which he can't escape, my dear friends. And whatever concept I discuss with you is only applicable to those for whom the concept of other authentication is applicable. But this concept and this rule, in fact, that is rule 10B, will not apply to those who are exempt from other authentication, such as my dear friends, whose person who is not citizen of India, who is a non-resident, who is outside India, for him, other is technically not possible. So for these people, this story will not apply. But if not, Generally, other authentication is required for two categories of persons, person who is applying for registration and also for the persons who have already undergone registration under GST. So my dear friends, with this discussion, I would like to complete the discussion of our RTP November 2022 exam of our CA Inter indirect taxes related part. And I'm sure this concept makes sense for all of you guys, my dear friends. So my dear friends, with this, I'll conclude discussion of our RTP and recently we posted the video of our amendments applicable for November 22 exam. That amendments already be covered in the main videos also. And we have also posted a separate amendments video on the YouTube channel so that you guys can happily look at it. So wish you all success, my dear friends. Wish you all the very best. We at Indigo Land are always there for your support and feel free to get back to us. Guys, don't hesitate. Any doubt, any time you guys have, feel free to post on the forums and we'll be more than happy to answer all your queries. Thank you so much. Take care. Wish you all success. All the very best.